What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and today I've got another video on the iPhone SE 2, the 2020 version. I post my first look video uh, the other day, also post a comparison to the TCL 10L, and I'll link those below if you guys are interested. Uh, today I'm gonna be talking about five features that I've found really are missing from similarly priced Android phones after using this for a week. So it's something I kinda wanna talk about because as you guys know, I am an Android fan, primarily review Android phones. So I'm coming from that perspective. I'm honestly telling you that here at the beginning of the video. So I'm gonna talk about those five features. I am gonna be comparing a little bit to the TCL 10 Pro, which is a $450 phone that I've been using. I'm gonna have a lot more coverage on this phone soon too, but you know, it's not a formal comparison to this phone. I'm just gonna be talking about a few features the iPhone SE 2 is mentioning. So before we get into that, I do wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, which is declutter. As you all know, I spend quite a bit on tech, which also means I have a lot of clutter around my office with old phones. Um, when it's time for you guys to upgrade to a new device and you need to sell your old phone, you wanna sell it to get some money to upgrade to something new like the iPhone SE, there's one place I go and that is to declutter.com. Um, you can also save the planet because you're not gonna be having your old devices going to a landfill. Declutter is a fast and easy way to sell your old phones, tablets, MacBook, games, consoles, and wearables like smartwatches, the Apple Watch. You can head over to declutter.com and then hit the start selling right here. Uh, if you go there, they pay up to 33% more than the carrier buyback programs and they pay fast, means you have cash to upgrade to the new iPhone or whatever else you wanna buy. You'll get that cash for your old device right away and it's good for the environment like I said before. Head over here, go ahead and tap on start selling and go ahead and find the device that you're interested in to get a free instant evaluation. If you wanna sell an iPhone, you can tap on start selling right there. Find the device you're interested in like the iPhone XS or 10S Max. Then you'll go ahead and ship the device uh, for free and you'll get paid the day after it arrives, giving you cash to upgrade. As you guys can see here, there's your sort of valuation. Go ahead and hit sell device. It'll add it to the uh, basket so you can go ahead and check out and sell your device to declutter. I also have a bonus offer for you guys if you are upgrading and you wanna sell your old device, you can use my code in order to get a 10% bonus on your device, and that code is SPRINGER10. Go ahead and type that in, SPRINGER10, and go ahead and hit VIND, and it'll go ahead and add you that 10% right there as well, and you can continue to check out. So again, if you're upgrading and you need cash for your old tech, check out theclutter.com, use SPRINGER10, the link will be in the description, and the pinned comment. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about those features that the iPhone SE 2 is missing in my opinion. Now the first feature, which is not a huge deal to everybody, but is important to some people, is the design of the phone. Now from the rear, the design looks pretty good, right? It does have a couple of things that you might see on a flagship that are missing. You know, you don't have multiple cameras, you got a single camera. But if you flip this phone over and you unlock it, you'll notice the huge chunky bezels on the front You've got a built-in fingerprint sensor, which is a physical one that's not in the display. Um, it just looks kind of outdated. Like I said, it looks like a miniature version of an iPhone 7 or iPhone 8 device from the front. And of course, that is something that's a little bit annoying when you're actually looking at this phone from the front or the side because you may not be interested in having an outdated looking device. So if you're someone who cares about the aesthetics of your device, that is something to consider at the end of the day. The next thing is the small screen itself. While this has something to do with the design, it also impacts other pieces of the device. So the screen being small is one, not that great for media consumption. So if you wanna watch media on here, right? When you turn the phone sideways, you're not gonna get the greatest media experience that you could. Whereas if you compare this to a phone like the 10 Pro from TCL, you've got a much bigger screen for enjoying things like Netflix, YouTube, etc. Of course, the TCL 10L, uh, the 10 Pro also has a much nicer looking, you know, modern design with the full screen. And so that goes right along with the design considerations is having that bigger screen. It's also a lower resolution panel, which admittedly, it doesn't look terrible, uh, but it's not as nice as, again, something like this, the AMOLED panel on here, which gets super bright and uh, really is a really nice looking panel. Whereas on the iPhone, it's much smaller not nearly as bright outdoors, uh, and just doesn't look as good with the colors, in my personal opinion. It doesn't pop quite as much at the end of the day. So that's the display is the second thing. 
The next thing is no face ID. So if you're an iPhone user and you've been, you know, seeing the phones these last couple of years and face ID has become really fast, really accurate. There's no face ID built into this phone. All it has is the fingerprint sensor, which, you know, is something that you may be used to. But if you're looking to get that new feature that Apple's been adding to the iPhones recently, you're not going to get it with the iPhone SE 2. It may not be something that everyone's really, really cares about, but it is another flagship feature that's missing from this device. And if you get something like, again, going back to the comparisons, the TCL 10 Pro has not only face recognition, but it also has a built-in fingerprint sensor into the display instead of a physical scanner down here below the display in these chunky bezels. So that's another thing to consider at the end of the day. The next thing is you've got no night mode built into your camera and you also only have a single camera. So you're losing some wide angle or macro lens options that you would get with a multi-camera array like the TCL 10 Pro. Now that doesn't mean that picture for picture, the quality is gonna be better when something that has multiple cameras um, or something that has a night mode, but it does mean that you're missing those features that are typically found in a flagship. I will have a camera comparison between these two, and I will say the TCL 10 Pro is quite surprising at 450. It does get really close to the iPhone SE, which I was a little surprised by because Apple has been putting out some great cameras lately, and uh, that is something to think about. Uh, the next thing, and perhaps I guess my final thing, is the lack of a headphone jack. And you might say, well, every phone is lacking a headphone jack these days. Um, not quite. There are still some Android phones in this segment around 400 to 500 that have it. And in fact, one of those phones, if you look at it right here at the top, I forgot it was in the top, you have a headphone, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the TCL 10 Pro. So this is a $450 phone, a little more expensive than the iPhone SE by 50 bucks, but it does have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, I'm certainly not saying that everyone cares about the headphone jack at the end of the day, or that this is gonna be a feature that's gonna make or break buying this phone for any one person, but it is something to consider if you're an audiophile and you're looking for a phone, you don't really care about the OS, it might be something that sways you to buying a mid-range and mid Android phone like the TCL 10 Pro over the iPhone SE 2. So those are the five things I've been missing. Um, the design, just a little outdated. That's not the biggest one to me, but I know some people care. Chunky bezels. The smaller screen size overall is annoying to me because I like to have all that real estate for watching videos and playing games. That's probably one of the things that bothers me perhaps the most. Uh, the lack of night mode in multiple cameras hasn't been a huge deal at the end of the day. Um, and then of course, the one that I mentioned at the end, the headphone jack, not a huge deal to me either. One other thing I will mention, which isn't really a missing feature, I guess, it's kind of more of an issue, is battery life. This phone right here has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. The iPhone SE has a tiny battery in comparison. I don't get anywhere near the battery life I get with the 10 Pro on the iPhone SE 2. So again, that's another thing to consider. Getting a smaller phone means you're gonna to be topping up more throughout the day. All right guys, so that is my overview of the iPhone SE 2. I've got a total there of five, I guess six issues if you wanna include battery life. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon. Also visit the clutter below, remind you, you can go ahead and sell your device to them and get an extra 10% by using the code in the description to Springer 10. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.